Welcome to the Black Girl Bravado Podcast, your weekly fix for all things mental health and wellness. I'm Brittany. And I'm Germany. And not only are we besties, but we're your besties. You heard me right. It's homegirl vibes here. Get ready for the girls to dish the real, the raw, and the fucking funny. And listen, we may drag you, but it's always in love. Let's start the show, cuties. Hey, y'all. Welcome back. Welcome, girls. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, y'all. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing so, 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 so good, 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 good. Yeah. That one is never, that that song has aged very well. It has. I love it. Do you think they'll do a reunion tour? I'm hearing they're supposed to be doing Essence Fest, which is what we're supposed to be doing this year. This is the year we're supposed to go to Essence Fest. So let's go. Real simple. We still at the top of the year. I'm just saying we got, this is when we got to start planning for, you know, because it'll hit us. Yeah. Let's start. Let's start. Let's start. It's the 50th anniversary. Oh my goodness. Or the 30th anniversary, I think. 25th or 30th? 50th one of the big ones yeah a milestone a milestone is a milestone b day and you know how black people feel about our milestone b days we show up we, and show, we show out. out we show out let's go so let's do a girl's trip and have a girl's trip experience let me tell you what else is happening this year that i have to go to t-pain is having a little residency in we, vegas yes 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 me and kayla said we want to go to that too so we're going we're all going it's gonna be good it's gonna it be is because he's doing acapella it's going to be He's doing so all, And you know one thing about it? I ain't even know it. He you know it. To a car to the stage. And you see a nigga throw it, nigga throw it, throw it, throw it. Throwing that ass for days. Booty going up, down. Every T, that first T-Pain album. Yeah. Wasn't it called From the top to the bottom. Now that I got you. Oh, I'm a yeah. sick, 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 sick. Ooh. <laughs> That that and, and the Jamie know. Fox energy is kind of like the same. Like yeah. when Jamie was singing, mm. it's just like being that's so he, playful and fun funny. in music, and it being a hit. Jamie Foxx's first album, that um, what was it called? Un unpredictable. Yeah, I think it was called unpredictable. Tonight we getting unpredictable. Woo! That debut album of T Pain. Yeah, he had us in a chokehold, top to bottom. Chokehold. What was that? Two thousand six, two thousand seven. Sprung. Two thousand six. How'd you get me? Got me doing things I and never And if you're from do. the Bay, you already know the remix. Got my white tee and my stunners on. Go ones and I can't go wrong. <laughs> go dumb. Dog, I'm hyphy. I really I love that. Yeah. I love that. I, yes. So the girls yeah. will be there. The girls will be everywhere this year. This is a everywhere. Another year. year. Another year. I don't feel like I was everywhere last year. Oh. I feel like I was some places. You know what it was? I the last few of my years have been going everywhere with my man. Oh, you you wasn't with your rounds. I wasn't with my rounds, and I'm ready to transition back to being. You ready everywhere to be with back my, with the rounds? I be with my rounds, but it's like it'd be a little different, you know. You get what I'm saying? I feel like I did a lot last year. Me personally. With me? No, I feel like we were disconnected. And if you want to reconnect. <laughs> Girl, fuck you. <laughs> Who do you feel like you were doing a lot with yourself? Everyone, shit, whoever. But me? Multiple people. Girl, I was going out with different people, doing things. One thing about it, I'm going to be outside. So what do you feel like you did? I did. I did. I went to concerts. I went to functions. I went. I traveled. I feel like I did a lot. I feel like I had a really eventful, like, full Full year. year. And that's the thing. I feel like I did do things. But like I said, it wasn't with my girlfriends. And that creates a different experience. You know, I feel like there's been a lot of coupling, a lot of coupling and a lot of like vacations and a lot of, you know, where we're exploring and doing things together. We did not take a friendcation last year. That was the first year we didn't go on a friendcation. Because we did the retreat. The retreat was Bitch, sort of that is work. I know, I know, I know. You know the vibe. We 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 have a good time. I'm not saying we don't have a good time, but you know the vibe. We I just, know that's we're gonna have our friendcation this year. <sighs> Damn, <laughs> God, we're gonna have our friendcation, and that's why I said I want to get back into doing more things with not just my friends, but with my best friend. It's different because y'all, I'm your sister. It's different, so I'm excited because we have a little retreat, a little staycation that we're planning that's coming up. I'm really, really pumped about I'm that. I'm really excited about our staycation. We're kicking off the year 
on a good note we're going on a staycation mm -hmm. slash planning retreat in a beautiful location it's so beautiful yes like, it's really it's really set in the, the town it's the really mood set is the set you know what i considered what going on a trip with a travel group for the places that you don't be wanting to go to. That's the why I don't. Before you jump down my motherfucking throat. For the places that you don't be wanting to go to. I considered. Where don't I want to go? You want to go to some place that's 100% developed. <laughs> 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 that rolls out of red carpet. Where do you want me? Where do you want me, Brittany? Where do you want me? Where do you want me? Where do you want me? Just where? Germany. Fuck Where? You. I need to know. I want to go to multiple places in africa okay some where? of them a lot of them are i want to go to south africa that's so developed bad. i know although i know they be doing some they be having outages and stuff i know they be having outages and theft see it's be that some... energy it'd be <laughs> that it'd be that it'd be that where else you want to go south africa that's the only place you should i want to go to morocco africa. okay i could go to morocco Ethan, you don't think i could go you don't think i could hang in morocco girl it's not about if you can hang. It's about your desire. Issa, Issa and Molly had planned a trip to Morocco. They did? Morocco, yeah. But Issa didn't have the money. So I want to go to Senegal as well. So that we'll talk about it off. I really, I really want to get in my abroad bag, okay? I already know you'll go to Europe. That's easy. I'll go to a lot of places. The only uh, There's some places in Asia I don't know if I can hang because okay, of the food. Okay, but do you want to go to Tokyo? Because I really want to go to Tokyo. The street food. Maybe I you could don't probably have to eat go there. Food. We eat sushi, pho, ramen. Okay, I could do that because I, I can't I don't eat know no street is food. Japan, but ramen. I don't think that is. That's something else. But ramen. I could eat ramen. Sushi. I could eat ramen. I could eat that. I could do those kind of things. I could do some. I just can't be eating just any old thing, y'all. My stomach can't handle it. So no, you know, but you know what, girl? I had a cheat code which we're gonna give to the girlies in Belize, and whenever we go places, Emodium. The travel land. You take one before every meal. Mm. I was taking one before every meal. What is it called? Travel Land. Okay. Travel A N. Oh, Travel Land. Um, they're like thirty dollars. It's like a probiotic like type mix with some digestive enzymes and stuff. So you take it before every meal because shit does get tricky. I was eating like I ate a local experience meal. The tilapia in Ghana is not no. I thought the same. Tilapia in Ghana, that's a staple. It's not like the tilapia in the States. It's a full fish. They have peppers and onions grilled on top of it. It is so good. It is not. The, that's what they're known for, tilapia. You can look like that. Uh, listen, we, I have no. no. It was so no, good. Uh, yeah, You're I'm, supposed to eat it with your hands, like the authentic experience. You eat it mm -hmm. with your hands and the jollof rice with your hands and all that shit. I didn't mess with the foo-foo. I was going to say, did you have any I didn't foo -foo? mess with the foo-foo. No? I wasn't the texture? Moved. I wasn't moved to do the foo-foo, but that was available. But all I'm saying is, when you take the, those peels, because yeah. we got fucked up mm -hmm. when we were in El Salvador. Yeah. But this, I was... You you found a cheat code. You felt good. I did. I felt so good. I okay, because like the last thing you want to be doing is having a stomach ache and shitting all over the place when you're abroad. Ugh. It just takes experience to another it place. It takes it down. <gasps> Ugh, ugh. I seen Ricky good. say he had the Bali belly. Ooh. He said, bitch, I got the Bali. <laughs> they look so good. They, they look, look so fab. cute for their, their New Year's. See, that's what I want to do. You, I want to do something like that. I'm all about I the luxury. I Bali, too. I'm all about the luxury, And I want to do that Bali. I want to do the Bali that they Who did. Who wouldn't? That's what I want to do. Who would it? Do Don't act things. like I want to be in the pits. No, I never said you wanted to be in the pits. I never said you wanted to be in the pits. I'm just explaining what I really want to do. What yeah, I design. I like a luxury too. I like a luxury touch. I love that. I love a bottle service. I love a full. I Same. I want I want to roll out all the stops, babe. That's what I want. I want all the stops rolled out when I go out. So yes, roll out the motherfucking carpet. I actually yeah, pull it out, pull it out, pull out the motherfucking red carpet. Exactly, blow the dust off of it. Right. If y'all don't use it no other time, use it when I'm here. Yeah. Yeah, you can have a red carpet experience almost anywhere you go. That's what I want. I want that one. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll talk about all the places that we're going to go this year because we're at the top. There's still a lot of time to plan and book tickets and all of the things. Yeah. Yeah. Stop playing with me. I'm just saying, you know how it go. Girl, I'm open this year. I didn't say you're not open. I'm I saying know. I'm not saying you didn't say I did. I'm not open. I'm just saying I am. Okay, because you know the time be flying. We got to get some. That's why we got to just sit down and organize. Right. But, you know, I did say this year I'm in my open air. I'm in my doing things that I've never done. I'm in my path of least resistance. I'm in my, huh, 
my hands are up, babe. I'm surrendering. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in the surrender area. I surrender. All. I'm surrendered. Okay. Oh, wow. So I'm going to take advantage of you. Take this. What? <laughs> I'm going to take advantage of that openness. Yeah. This openness that I feel, very feminine. Ooh, feminine. Very feminine. Vim- very That's, feminine. That is very feminine. Mm-hmm. Speaking of feminine, that's a good segue. Yes. So, this is our final episode of the Being That Girl series. Yes. Is this it? Is it? I don't know. It might be. If yeah. it is, this is where it is. This if it is, doesn't, y'all, is, we coming back. Hey. We coming back. And um, you said you're going to be tapping into being more feminine. Open, mm-hmm. Being open is being feminine. I definitely want to lean more into my femininity. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's an area of opportunity for me to just really like uh, yeah. soften up a little bit. Yes. And, you know, just be the woman that I was created to be. But I will say that there's a lot of chit chat. Chit chat them about oh my god <laughs> lord <laughs> there's a lot of chit chat about femininity and what it means to be feminine and i feel like a lot of the conversations are like one way mm-hmm. like this is being feminine being nurturing being soft be, that's femininity yeah but there are so many different ways that our femininity can be showcased and displayed yeah. Yeah. depending on our personality type what we decide to hone in on and focus on mm-hmm, mm-hmm. femininity is broad it is it's a spectrum it is and i'm ready to have the conversation yeah the about more we that. understand like the broadness of femininity and the different types of feminine energy that you can harness or possess you know i feel like we not only can be more accepting of one another but more accepting of ourselves and understanding the true power that we have as women there's some power here baby that we little pussy got some power <laughs> <laughs> baby there's a lot of power here baby girls yeah and we have to lean in i'm ready to lean in well, I'm ready too. So we're going to be talking about the female archetypes. Mm-hmm. We've talked about them before in a different way. The feminine archetypes. Um, feminine archetypes, yes. But it's always um, a nice time to refresh mm-hmm. and talk about the conversation with renewed perspective and experience. Mm-hmm. And what I'm excited about with this um, topic is just getting rid of any ha- increased self-awareness for one. And getting rid of, rid of any blocks or things in the way yeah. that prevent me from showing up as like my highest self. Yeah. Because that's really what I'm on. Yeah. I'm on the path of highest self. Yeah, for sure. And I think what I'm not what I think what I'm most excited about is getting rid of preconceived notions of what femininity looks like. Mm-hmm. Opening up the conversation of what femininity can look like, you know, creating more back and forth dialogue for people to understand and for us ourselves to understand that we can show up as many different types of women it's liberating it's very very liberating and there is like i said power in that there's so much power in this you know what's even more powerful when we have history and information facts studies research to back shit up mm-hmm. i love when i can pull into a toolkit and say let me show science you. Let me tell you something. (laughs) This is not me just talking out the side of my neck. Mm -hmm. This is really backed by something. And what these feminine archetypes is backed by is extensive research. Mm -hmm. So psychoanalyst Carl Jung. Is it Jung or Jung? Jung. Jung. (laughs) Carl Jung. I was letting you rock. (laughs) Yeah. So he did a lot of studies on these archetypes And he originally had came up with four archetypes. Mm -hmm. Um, But as people expanded on this research and did more studying, they learned that um, four was not enough to cover the full spectrum of women Mm -hmm. because we're not a monolith. There's we all show up in so many different ways. So that got expanded. But an archetype represents common behaviors in our collective consciousness. So each of the female feminine archetypes details the differences in the ways that we express ourselves the way way that we show up our personalities our patterns the way that our energy is harnessed displayed felt exchanged yeah there's a lot of nuance here 
Yes. So a popular um, psychoanalyst that expanded on Carl Jung's work, her name is Jean Shinoda Bolin. Um, she came up with the seven uh, female archetypes based on habits and behaviors associated with Greek goddesses. Because mm-hmm. we are goddesses. <laughs> we are. She did. And the seven female archetypes, according to her, are the mother caregiver archetype, the maiden innocent archetype, the lover archetype, the mystic archetype, the huntress archetype, the queen archetype, and the sage archetype. Mm-hmm. So while we're having this conversation, um, the intent, I think it's good to, to set an intention. The yeah. intention is to benefit from knowing exactly where you stand. Um, there's going to be some things that like automatically pop up that ha- that resonate with you as we're going through this, um, which feels good. But we're not limited. Yeah, so we're not limited. Yeah. And and like we said, you might have resonance there. You you what I think is really cool is that you can resonate with all of these archetypes as we move through life, different points of our life. We'll yeah. find that we might go from this archetype to that archetype and experience, you know, two to three, four archetypes throughout our lifetime that, you know, we show up as most as. So it's it's fun. It's fun. It's, it's interesting. Insightful. It's cool. It is. That we can be different versions of ourselves, that our femininity can be displayed um, in different ways. And we're not limited. We're not limited. That's a really cool thing. I love this for us. Before we kind of get into our archetypes and chatting more about this, I think we should take a quick little break. Okay. And we'll come right back. Okay, y'all. So we're back. We mm-hmm. are going to get into the nitty gritty of these archetypes, explaining the different archetypes and what they mean. Yeah, their traits. Their traits. This is always fun. This is always fun. I Anytime love this there's part. information to help us identify and like, you know, ways that we relate to one another, I always feel like, ooh. I do too, especially when I feel like, wow, this That's is really. Me. <laughs> right this is really who i am it's cute this is really who i am so there is a quiz you know we um love to provide you all with the tool so there is a quiz that we will put in the show notes where you can take the quiz and figure out what your archetype is um you can do that before or pause it um or you can do it after yeah so do it after Should in the we- meantime we're just going to break down the different archetypes really quickly yeah Let's get into it. So the first archetype is the mother. There are a few key traits that she possesses, which is nurturing, being nurturing, compassionate and heart centered. Mm. She has a light side, babes, and the mother loves unconditionally. She's caring, supportive, loyal, empathetic, highly compassionate. And she has a deep desire to be of service. That's a really I can key identify point. some mothers. Of course, Mother the mothers energy. in my life, yeah. And then there's a shadow side, which we know that all of us have a shadow side, right? The part of us that we're not necessarily as proud of or little parts of us that we feel like we can work on. Areas of improvement. Areas of opportunity for us. So the shadow mm-hmm. side of the mother, the mother tends to put the needs of others above her own, mm-hmm. right? She can neglect to care for herself properly. And her biggest fear is being met with ingratitude and feeling useless. Yeah. So the mother archetype does not always have to have children. I Like we said, I know a lot of mothering or energy. Or desire to have children. Yeah, yeah, in my life. And they are childless. They, they are childish. She just has this energy to show great care to the people around her, right? She might be the homegirl who's always willing to cook for everybody or check on everybody. Maybe make a little goodie basket and take mm-hmm. to you when you're sick or mm-hmm. checking on mm-hmm. the mother. You know, when you be like, I'm the mom of the group. When we go yeah. out, I got to make sure all everybody's good. Yeah. And, you know, they have they have that vibe. They have that you know, me. there are a few mothers that you might know or might sound familiar. Mother Teresa is an example. And Ayala Van Zandt. <laughs> Please. Jan Levanzant. Why do you have I say- am Jan Levanzant. <laughs> <laughs> also, mothers have this energy, the mother energy of being like very warm, safe space. Yeah. You know, calm, a place where you feel like you can go and yeah. lay your head in their bosom. Figuratively <laughs> or literally. Yeah. Yeah, the mother vibe. Mm-hmm. Okay. The next archetype is the maiden. So. Um, someone with this archetype is innocent, idealistic, intuitive. 
They have their light side is they have a youthful outlook on life, playful nature. The mating may seem innocent. Coy, coy girl. Coy, shy coy girl. girl. Um, she is very adaptive and open to learning new things. Uh, her deepest desire is for there to be harmony. Mm. Can we all just get along? Like, why is what's the problem? Like, yeah. we're just out here having fun. Like, come on. Um, the maiden shadow side is um, they might be too naive for their own good. A little too aloof. Tap mm. in. Tap in, sweetie. Please, girl. Um, this can put them in a state of victimhood or give the impression that um, you may refuse to grow up. Her deepest fear is being judged negatively by others and being abandoned. Um, it is said that the mating is the maiden is the least awakened of all the archetypes and has plenty of room for growth. She is intuitive and moves through life fully believing that she can turn any of her dreams into reality. Mm. A dreamer girl. Um, some examples of a maiden are Shirley Temple. I think that's a good example. Little Shirley Temple. <laughs> And Josephine Baker. Listen. Hmm. Maiden. Do you know a maiden? I think I do. I think you do. I think I know a maiden. <laughs> I, I As I'm reading yeah. these, it's so fun to like say, hmm, I think I, think I know that, a maiden. Yeah, I, I, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Okay, the next, the next archetype. Not many. The lover. No. Mm, the lover. The lover. So the key tricks of the lover is she's attractive, um, sensual, and emotional. The light side of the lover is magnetic. She knows how to attract. She's really confident. Mm -hmm. she, she creates her own reality. Oh. And her deepest desire is intimacy. Okay. Hey. There is a shadow side to the lover girl. She seeks external validation and finds it hard to commit. Mm. Um, she can be very emotional. Her biggest fear is being abandoned or reject rejected. The lover is captivating, right? She has this very sensual energy. She has the ability Magnetic. to yes to get your attention when she walks in the room. Anybody who the lover comes in contact with, they're changed. Okay, they're not they're not the same. I and like she it. sparks an intense connection with people. She sparks like that fire, that flame that you're like, ooh, I'm drawn to yeah, you. Yeah, I'm captivated. I'm drawn you're to so you. You're so tantalizing. Some examples of a lover are Marilyn Monroe, which I I was a stand. I was a Marilyn Monroe stand back in the day um, for her femininity. Yeah. That like very soft. It's just really like a woman. Like when it's you, like woman. Yes. I am woman. <laughs> Brianna. Oh, yes. Brianna. This energy. I like this energy. I love this energy. I like. But what's really I, 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 I love this energy, too. But I think what's funny and what's really um, insightful and, and beneficial to know is that like you might identify with it, but you don't possess it. And that's why sometimes it feels inauthentic. Yeah. When you're trying or, or intimidating and a little inauthentic when you're trying to give bad gal. Yeah. And, and you're, you're, innocent, and you're, and you're, and you're a maiden. maiden or you're a mother. Yeah. It's like you could tap in, but be authentic, be genuine. Samantha from sex in the city is another example of a lover and baby girl. Lover, Lori Harvey. We know miss Lori. We know miss Harvey. Lori. Yeah. Lori is that girl between this. Yeah. yeah. This, this archetype. This like one he had gets the niggas in a chokehold. Tizzy. Hole. It's something. They do something to him. It's a tizzy. Yeah. It gets him in a tizzy. Mm -hmm. Ooh. We going to talk more about that. Yeah. So the next archetype is the mystic. So some key traits of the mystic are introverted, calm, focused inward. Mm -hmm. The light side of Miss Mystic. That's what reminds me of Pretty Miss. Tick, tick, tick. Shout out to you, Velma. <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah. She knew what she was okay. She was mystical. That's so why. So a light, the light side of a mystic. She has an aura of peace and tranquility, and is highly self-aware. Her deepest desire is inner peace. The shadow side of the mystic. So these mystics, they have the tendency to go into isolation, which can make it hard to start meaningful relationships. Mm -hmm. Her deepest fear is feeling disconnected and out of control. So Miss Mystic is most <laughs> comfortable in solitude and quiet. She is calm and spiritual, seeking harmony. She helps others stay balanced with her peaceful approach to life. Some of our famous examples are Saide Adu. Yeah. Angelina Jolie, Gwyneth Paltrow. I'd like to throw in an honorable mention for Janae Aiko. Yeah, big Janae. Yeah, Janae energy. Big Janae energy. <laughs> Let's put Miss Aiko on there. Let's put definitely Janae on there. Janae is definitely a mystic. Yeah. Okay, next is the Huntress. I'm a hunter. You remember that song? No? Never heard it. For real? No, I don't think so. I'll play it for you later. Yeah. Okay, so the Huntress, Miss Huntress. She's self-reliant, independent. She's a free spirit. 
the light side of the huntress. She will face any challenge without flinching. Mm. You can't even flinch, Pit baby. Bull in a skirt. Exactly. The huntress is fierce. She's very courageous. Her deepest desire is freedom on all levels, darling. The shadow side, honey. She can struggle with getting in touch with her emotions and being vulnerable. Her deepest fear is being powerless or trapped. Mm. The huntress has a warrior spirit. She relies on her inner strength to overcome obstacles. I'm a warrior. <laughs> she is independent and knows how to take care of herself. And this can be very inspirational to women who are like, you know, looking in on her as an example. Mm. Um, a few of our huntress examples are Serena Williams and Angela Davis. Listen, huntress. Okay, now I hope your wheels are turning. You guys, are, you guys start thinking about. <laughs> fuck you. But, <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> the link up y'all gotta get on youtube while we're reading these Ooh. start getting your wheels turning about which one you may be but also which one we the girls be. may be yeah so the queen mm-hmm. as Aaliyah Janae would do this, 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 Janelle, that's, Janelle, whenever I say it. the queen I really feel like I'm embodying Nicki Minaj <laughs> but the queen is talking <laughs> So some key traits of the queen. She's ambitious, outgoing, and confident. The light confident. Confident. The light side. She is confident, loyal, and ambitious and knows how to take charge. Her deepest desire is personal power. We gonna keep doing (laughs) Shadow side. She she can become jealous and controlling when she feels insecure. Her deepest fear is losing control. So the queen is a natural leader. Long lasting relationships are very valuable. Um, They said that the queen is the goddess of marriage. The queen really values being in relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay. She, she needs that or she doesn't feel complete. The queen knows her worth and loves the finer things in life. Some examples of the queen and it's fitting. I'm starting to realize why people are called with their called. <laughs> Beyonce. Yeah. Elizabeth Taylor. Definitely. And Kim Kardashian. 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 Yes. The queen. Mm. She likes the finer things. Material girl. I want Chanel and I, but... <laughs> Okay, next um, and final archetype is the sage. Key traits of the sage are truthful, insightful, and logical. Her light side, she's al- she always speaks the truth and knows how powerful she is. She is focused on personal growth. Their deepest desire is discovering and sharing truth. Now the shadow side, mm-hmm. she can struggle with being in the moment and showing empathy to others. Her deepest fear is not being recognized for who she is. Mm-hmm. The sage is smart and strategic, always plotting her next move. She is disciplined and willing to shed old versions of herself in the quest for self-improvement. Some of those sages that we are familiar with are Oprah Winfrey, oh, Martha Stewart. Makes sense. And Michelle Obama. Becoming. <laughs> the, this really makes sense these archetypes they all make sense mm-hmm. they made sense to me when I read them and I can identify girly a girly or girlies in my life that fit into these archetypes For sure. but which one are you what archetype is which most dominant which is your dominant archetype the queen <laughs> get on YouTube y'all the when queen. the queen comes in everybody makes bait when the, key, when the queen, queen comes through yeah part like the rest say move out the way period yeah the queen how many times I'm gonna say? So when, when I you took got the, this, the quiz and I, I was the queen, I was like, okay, I'm not surprised because it definitely, it, it definitely, definitely when I read true. it, when I read it, I said, this is her. Yeah, big queen energy, big queen energy, and the funny charismatic, thing is, mm-hmm. marriage, relationship, girly, yeah. confident, yeah. outgoing. Yeah, yeah, it's giving her ambitious. Before I go into that, yes, the queen. That's what my dominant archetype is. What's your dominant archetype? I'm the huntress. And not I, surprised. I felt like I would be her. Yeah. Really goal oriented. Freedom, freedom. I can't move. Freedom. Me I lose. love freedom. Yeah. I love moments where I just feel like free and unrestricted and unconfined. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm courageous. Yeah, you are. I'm bold. Yeah. I found a lot of um resonance in the huntress too, and there was very a lot of similarities when I was like doing further research reading mm-hmm. It said that the huntress and the queen are very similar. But the difference between the two is the queen's need for relationships. Mm. That's really the that's really the, dif- the difference. Yes. Yes. Is the need for relationships feeling like 
you need the compatibility of like a partner to lead, like not just to lead, but that but helps to help you. propel you forward. Yes. And it says that you need a partner that has status. And you always have said that. You come to the table with something. You've baby. always said you've always said come that. to the table with something. And What's I a queen find it a king? funny that they said that, you know, I do desire partnership. I love partnership. But there is a part of me that I have said on this show multiple times and like even in your conversation that feels like sort of confined yeah. in, when I'm partnered. Yeah. And I feel so most empowered when out. I'm in relationship and not just a romantic relationship. When I'm in like long term standing relationships with people, the people in my life, I feel most value like, you know, yes, all my shit is together. Yeah. Or I'm happiest. I thought that the other day when I was waiting on your return. The year of the return. When I was waiting on this girl to get back, I said, man, I really love my people. I really love my friends. And I always share with Andres how much I'm appreciative and feel blessed to be in partnership with him. Yeah. But I was feeling the same way about you. I was like, I'm so blessed to be in partnership in a relationship with this girl. I feel like that, too. Like, I don't. The thing is, it says that, like, I value as a huntress. I value solitude, mm -hmm. which I do. Yeah. Which is why I feel like. It's so easy for me to like go out and do stuff by myself or if mm -hmm. somebody doesn't want to do it, like I'll figure out a way to do it or make it happen. Like I, I don't feel no way about that. I feel like, OK, if I want to do something, I'll do it. Yeah. And that's definitely big huntress energy. When I got that, I, I knew it. I said this. I knew it. I knew I was going to be a huntress baby because the way my. It says I will be very successful, though, and I love to see that. Yeah. But I think that you being a queen and being, me being a huntress is very complimentary. Yeah. We get along so motherfucking well. Mm -hmm. It really feels just like breathing. Yeah. As simple as breathing without a ventilator. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy breathing. An easy breath. Is there, I agree. Is there an archetype that you feel like you wish you would, um, you could embody more of? Yes. Which one? The lover. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, this year. Yes. This year, I want to tap more into my lover. I'm loving the lover energy. For sure. I feel like it's the, the lover. the sensual sexy. The sensual sexy, captivating, do yeah. what I want you to do <laughs> energy. I love that. I like it to be controlled with like the huntress in me. Yeah. I don't want to go off the deep end with it. But I feel like that'll be good for me, especially because the shadow side of a huntress is like, opening up and being vulnerable mm -hmm. and emotional. I think if I bring in some of that lover yeah. girl, soften you up a that can bit. soften me up for sure and help with my shadow side yeah, and really like help increase my femininity. I like it. And then also I think I can tap into a little bit of my, no, nah, I'm not even going to act like that. What? I was going to say mother. Oh, but hell, that's I, that one I ain't even look that's back cap. at. I ain't that's even look cap. back at I'm that. I'm so sorry. I ain't even look that's back just not at me. that. That's not me. What about you, though? What what archetype would you like to embody more? I think definitely more. I feel like I already have a little bit of lover in me. I feel like I could get in that bag kind of like, eh. but some maiden. Some, some maiden, maiden would be cute, like being I, more playful and open and, you know, being willing to learn new things and. I already feel like I have a deep desire for harmony and like things to be pretty like even click kill and everybody to be good around this bitch. But, you know, um, yeah, just being more intuitive and being open to growth. I feel like I that like would be that, cute. too. I think I have some area of opportunity to tap into maiden a little bit mm -hmm. with not taking everything so serious. Yeah. Allowing myself to be like, oh. If you want to play, we can play. Yeah, I want a little playfulness. I want a little play, playfulness. Play. I want a little more sensuality. I feel like even, but, I feel like I'm already, like I said, between the Huntress and the Queen energy, I'm good in that area. Yeah, I, I think got I that. think the Huntress, I feel <laughs> real, I, I feel like I'm standing 10 toes down on the Huntress. Yeah, I, 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 I feel I, really I feel good in my Queen energy. Really self-reliant, independent, but I do want to lean in. I want to lean in and lean on. Someone. Someone else. Yeah. That is sturdy. Get in here with some roots, boy. Get in here. Well, well before they get in here, we got to get out of here for just a quick okay. moment. We're going to take a quick, quick break and come right back. Before we get back into the show, we got to gather y'all. So if you're here. And you've been here 
I want to hope you are already have left your rating and your review. If not, that is at the top of your agenda. Do not let this month end without doing that. Okay? Yeah, what the hell's wrong? Don't with let y'all? this month end without doing that. That is payment <laughs> for being here. You sitting up here, and you just taking. It's time to give. What else do we want them to do? We want you to join us over at the Homegirl Hangout. There's a lot of great content, years worth of content over there. If you like what we're doing here, you will love what we're doing over there. Mm -hmm. Exclusive community where we are, you know, getting a chance to connect with our girls on a deeper, more intimate level. We get to share where we are in the month, what we're feeling in a safe space, y'all, because my coworkers be listening to this motherfucking podcast. I'm going to just be completely honest. They do. they found it. They found it. It has been discovered. It's been discovered. And um, I'm grateful. I'm going to say that because if they are discovering it, that means that more other people are discovering it. And that's what I want us to do is rise to the top. We're heading there. But for all my business that I don't want them to know, you got to get over sure to Patreon. So, it is. Okay. Get over on Patreon for the real tea. And all the information to join us is down in the show down notes. Down in the show notes. So we'll see you over there. Homegirl Hangout per. We shared that we want to embody other archetypes that aren't our dominant archetypes. Mm -hmm. So embodying these archetypes, which you can do it too, it involves integrating um, these qualities into your daily life, changing certain things, doing things differently. Yeah. And we'll start to be like, oh, I'm noticing the lover pop out. I'm noticing the mystic, the maiden, the huntress, the queen. (laughs) The sage. The sage pop up and we can do all this while still staying true to who we are yeah right we're not saying we're going to change overnight we're going to transform into these different women but we are flexing our muscles Mm -hmm. and tapping into our femininity in different ways so you can embrace the aspects that resonate with you but we can also have some balanced expression and not be so rigid i don't have to stay in my huntress no 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 i don't have to live there I can dip my toe in other areas and we're going to tell you how you can do that as well. So let's get into it. So if you would like to be more like the maiden, you can embrace youthfulness and new beginnings. You can stay open to learning, embracing spontaneity and nurture your sense of innocence and curiosity. And what that looks like practically is finding the magic in the little things. Right. We already mentioned we want to be more open to play and exploring new passions. That's really big for me. See, I feel like I'm leaning into my maiden bag this year because um, y'all already know I've been doing like Pilates on class pass for Mm -hmm. the past like year or two. And I was like, I'm ready to do something different. And I want to take tennis lessons this year. So I'm pausing my class pass and I'm getting into a tennis bag and I'm joining that. And I'm like learning what other new things do I want to do, you know, and allowing myself the room to explore. You know what I had thought about doing? What? Um, which I don't know how this is going to work with my sober curiosity journey. I can make, I can figure out a way that it works is, but I want to be a certified song. Som- Somalia. Yes. I knew you were going to say that. I really want to get certified, like to learn about wine on a really deep level. And like when I travel to different countries, grabbing a bottle. Yeah. And learning about it. Yeah, you should. And then you can inform me yeah. of things. That would be very cute. Start doing it. You know, I just want us to start doing the things that we feel like we want to do. Yes. Just start. Even if it's just looking up things online or when you're picking up your own little bottle, figuring out what the notes are and what can be paired with it. We got to just start. I'm tired of the talking era. It's time to do. It's the We in the doing era. So the mother. If you want to embody the mother archetype, you can cultivate nurturing and caregiving qualities, support others, whether this is emotionally or physically. Um or practically, and foster a sense of community and warmth. So the way that you can do this is paying it forward. Mm-hmm. There's multiple different ways to pay it forward. Yeah. Um, taking care of yourself Period. as much as you take care of others because we want to shy away from the shadow side. And I know when we're in our mothering bag, we can be others first, but don't forget to take care of yourself. And also heal your mother wounds. Ooh, that's a big If one. you have a sketchy relationship with your own mother and there is an opportunity or a safe space for you to work on healing those wounds, highly encourage you to do that because by doing that, you will notice that you will open up that side of yourself. You know, if we're damaged or there's a lot of trauma there, we can find it hard to tap into that space because we've never experienced that like mother and energy. Mm -hmm. So we don't know how to exhibit that because it's like, fuck, mine wasn't there for me like that. And it's uncomfortable. It can be be very very uncomfortable. uncomfortable. So 
Love it. If you want to embody more of the, the huntress energy, then talk to me. Just kidding. <laughs> Embrace your independence and self-sufficiency. Develop your skills. Pursue your goals with determination and foster your inner strength and resilience. Right. So this could look like going on a hike, reconnecting Being with nature. Nature is good for us. Yes. Enjoying your alone time, planning an adventure, setting a goal and sticking to it, figuring out what you want to do this year, being passionate about it, pursuing it aggressively really get to it yeah get to really the bag to stand it. on it you know and really i think also it. lean into your intuition of knowing what you desire and moving on it that's big, what big you got to energy it's it's saying it and doing it for real for real yeah so if you want to embody the sage i love a sage girl mm. prioritize wisdom and intuition so trust your instincts seek knowledge and share your experiences to guide others. We're not mm -hmm. hoarding the information. Yeah. This can look like going down rabbit holes, like really finding something that you're passionate about and you're interested in learning more about and really like diving into it, unpacking it, really learning it. And when you learn it, sharing it with others, yeah. like being like, you know, let me tell you about something, openly expressing yourself. That's the sage. They're talking about something and they know they're talking about something and they love to share it. I love girlies like that. Mm -hmm. I love tapping into that curiosity and that learning. Um, train your brain. We're going to be doing some mental exercising. <laughs> brain puzzles. Yeah. Um, Sudoku. 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 Yes. I was on the plane playing this little game. With Dwayne. Right. <laughs> I was on the plane playing this little game. I'm like, this is probably what those people that are sharp as fuck be doing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You so do. if you want to tap into your sage girly, this can be the year for you to do that. I love it. If you want to embody more lover girl energy. This is me. I'm listening. Listen up. Cherish connections and emotional depth. <sighs> Cultivate intimacy, express love and compassion and embrace vulnerability in relationships. This might look like dancing, okay, expressing your inner artist and learning to be present. I can do that. You so can. I'm reading. I'm going to start this book about creativity, tapping into my creativity and the artist within the artist way. Mm -hmm. It's a popular book. And hopefully that helps bring out more of my lover girl energy. Going on the dates, I can do that. Well, <laughs> that's, that's not that's that. Not, that's, yeah, that's not what you need to be doing. But yet. the dancing, I can do that. Yeah, for sure. Me and Andres, we were going to take a salsa class. I need to that. Oh, see, yeah. that'll help me get into my lover energy, too. Come here, boy. Do yeah. This. Every time we go somewhere and they get to dance, and I'm like, well, if we was taking them classes already, we would be out here on the floor Listen. showing them up. Listen. We would be wiping the floor with their ass. Listen. That's what I also see. I want to do more of that. I want to do more unconventional things during the week. Because that class is during the week. My tennis class is during the week. I'm just ready to switch my routine up a little bit and do mm -hmm. some more living. Yeah. I do a lot of routining. It's time to live. And I want to do a little bit more life. It's time to live. Living. I mean, because. I've been doing a lot of life in. We I want to do a lot one, of living. And we only have one life to live. Exactly. I want to start doing it. I'm happy. I want there to be more balance between my work and my play. Yeah. And it doesn't always feel that way. Thank you. Yeah. It doesn't always feel that way. <sighs> you deserve to play. I do and be played with. Not in that way, though. Oh, in that Not in that way. way. In the lover way. In the freaky yeah, way. Yeah, that way. <laughs> so the queen, if you want to embody the queen energy, mm -hmm. you should be embodying leadership and sovereignty. Set some boundaries, take responsibility and lead with grace and strength because you are the queen. You are the queen. One thing I can do is set a boundary. You, you're great. You're so good. I admire that in you. I girl. admire that. you. Oh, that's so sweet. I do. You are so good at that. I'm like, I need to be more like her with that. Because, bitch, you will set it. Girl, and walk away. So, yeah. No, with no with no quiver. No. Meanwhile, I'm like, it's the best. <laughs> I know. Uh, but if you want to embody the queen, go on dates. Mm -hmm. These are the these are the relationship girls. Go on dates. Treat yourself. And stand your ground and stand on business. Listen, do what you say. Do it, you do, do it, do it. We're doing all of that, okay? And it. then all of a sudden, the queens are popping out. We're all walking around with, with crowns, crowns on, on our heads. Okay, doing that. Rah. 
Yeah. Lastly, the mystic. If you want to embody your mystic energy, embrace spirituality and introspection, connect with your inner self and explore mystical, religious, spiritual practices and seek deeper understanding and meaning, meaning of life. This might look like going on a retreat, Mm. meditating, journaling, going to church. If that's what you do, reading your Bible, devotional, taking time, doing breath work, all of those practices that will allow you to be still and connect. Yes. And go inward. Tap into those things. Mm -hmm. The mystic loves those. You know, after hearing all these, there is there is areas of opportunity for us to have a little bit of all of this. Yes. Inside of us. I think they're all unique. They're all special. They all are powerful. Mm -hmm. They all have benefits. A place in our lives. They do. They do. I love it. And that's what I love about women. We are so dynamic. We can be anything and everything that we want to be. And all of this energy exists inside of us. Mm -hmm. We already have some mystic. We already have some queen, some lover girl, some huntress, some sage, some maiden, some mother. We just got to decide when we want to pull it out. Right. And knowing that we have the ability to pull it out is powerful. It is. Knowing that, okay. And even if you feel like you're you're on um, shaky knees, you're not fully solid in it. You can do what you need to do to embody it when you need it. Yeah. That's your cheat code. Yeah. That's the key Love it. to success. It so share this episode with someone. <laughs> with the women in your with life. With the women in your life. Take the quiz. Identify your dominant archetype and see, okay, I want to tap more into this one. Do all of it and come and tell us mm-hmm. what your archetype is. You know where to find us. We're on Instagram. <laughs> the Black We're Girl Provider Pod. Okay, so now it is time to transition into our final segment, Mm -hmm. the Homegirl Hotline. So with the Homegirl Hotline, that is our number that you can call or text. We take voicemails, we take text messages, and we give advice Mm -hmm. because we have something, we have things to share. Okay. Hi, Brittany in Germany. I'm leaving you guys a message. I hope this is okay. I have a homegirl dilemma if that's even a thing (laughs) um so i am 24 and i am in a relationship and i have thriving friendships at the moment not a lot but maybe two thriving friendships um in addition to other familial relationships and i'm having a hard time identifying and then vocalizing my needs and wants in those relationships um recently my romantic partner like asked me like you know what are your needs like you know what what do you need out of this relationship and i was a deer in headlights and i feel like that's really problematic and i think it's because i'm so used to just handling everything on my own and thinking that i can meet all of my needs which i know is not true so where do you recommend I start with identifying my needs and then, of course, vocalizing them to my loved ones? Thanks so much. Okay, bye. She's cute. Super. Cute. I think I wanted to say love you. <laughs> <laughs> I did. First of all, I think that kudos to the boyfriend for at that age, even asking her, like, what are her needs mm-hmm. in the relationship? I applaud him for that because I don't recall being asked. Yeah. But as um, a young teen. Yeah, as a young tender. But to answer the question about how do you identify your needs um, and then be able to express them, the first step, I think you're in a, right, a good place like listening to shows like this and exploring yourself and gaining more self awareness is what's going to help you identify what you need that's what's helped me identify what i need like gaining more self-awareness and then also like being in relationships with different people yeah for sure and recognizing like the type of person that i am like i know that i'm independent like i know that i can take care of a lot of things by myself but i also know that um i'm an acts of service girl and somebody somebody that's capable um offering to help me and take some of the weight off of my plate is something that i need you know and so Think about the moments where you're like, oh, my God, I'm able to do this by myself, but I I would really like to have help right now. Would it be so much easier if somebody can, like, take care of some of this or if someone offered? Mm -hmm. And then once you identify that, then vocalize and like, you know what? 
this is what I need. This is what um, I would like. It makes it easier because you have someone who's receptive to hearing what you need. I think that's going to help with like communicating it. But the identif- identification piece is just really tapping in and being in tune with yourself um, and having like a front row seat to the dealings of your life and recognizing like, oh, like I would like this or. I I could use something like this instead of like being kind of passive and just going by and getting through and going through the motions with things. I think Um, the self exploration um, helps you identify what you need. Yeah. And paying attention to what feels good and acting on that. Yeah. You know, if it feels good when someone extends themselves to you, I want more of that. You know, sometimes we can't put it into words, but we know how it feels when we're experiencing something that makes us feel good. Um, I also want to make note of the fact that you say you have a few thriving friendships and your relationship seems to be healthy from what you've disclosed to us. He seems like a a decent person. I don't want to say good guy, (laughs) but it seems like it's a good space for you to lean into the safety and the security of your friends, friendships and your relationships. So as you learn to identify what it is that you want, a part of the vocalization piece comes with knowing that it's safe to do so. You know that these people want to catch you. Yeah. You know, they, it's, it's safe for you to say, hey, girl, I could use it more of you calling me on the weekends or checking in with me on the weekdays because I feel like I do a lot of the calling or whatever, whatever it might be. Or can you schedule a few dates for us? That would be helpful because sometimes I feel like I'm mainly the person doing it. Yeah. You'd be surprised what the safety and security in your relationships allows you to feel liberated to say and do. For sure. So, that, that's a key piece. You know, lean into the fact that you have some great people in your life who you can trust. Last final thing that I would add is um, just like you have these relationships with other people, cultivating a relationship with yourself really is going to be a fast track to identifying mm. what you need. Like just like you are thriving in those other relationships, make it an intentional effort to thrive in a relationship with yourself, yeah. doing things by yourself, trying new things, being curious, um, exploring. That's going to help you realize like, okay, this is what I like. This is what I need. And stand on it. It'll help you know what you want. Mm -hmm. You'll be real sure. Anytime we explore the relationship we have with ourselves and lean into that, we become more confident in what we want and what we need and thus become more confident saying it. So, yes, thank you for calling us. We appreciate you. It's an honor for us to give our advice and for y'all to feel like we are making an impact in your lives. We've been getting so many sweet messages saying we're role models and y'all love us so much. And that, you know, role model for me, this podcast helps you get through a day and makes you feel good and empowered. And that's really what it's here for. After all these years, it's still doing what it's supposed to do. And that's a blessing. So I love y'all. We love y'all. I love you. I love you. (laughs) And we'll see you next week love you she could never do it just stop do it though just do it the millennial way i don't way. like the millennial and i will way. hold it down I don't like the millennial for the progressive way. millennials who know how to keep up period per love you bye, bye.